Tonight on Marketplace, is there something in the water? Across the country, fear is spreading door to door. What he was trying to convince us of essentially was just how bad our water is. If they haven't come knocking yet, there's a good chance they will. I was taken, but good. You had no idea? No, I had no idea. We go undercover to reveal the secret sales tricks behind an expensive water purification system. This is a bit of a trick. Uh, we just want to let you know that we know about it. At this home in Milton, Ontario, we're getting ready for a free tap water test. Okay, we've got to get all the gear set up, Chris, and everything. Any minute now, the doorbell will ring. When it does, we'll catch the water test on hidden camera. It's the first marketplace plant cam. We're testing the test to find out if it's legit. Other way, other way. Yes. Yeah. Beauty. But first, we're heading to a home in New Liskert, Ontario. We hear there was a problem with a free test. A water tester knocked on doors in this trailer park. Beth Moore lives here. He just asked if he could do a water test and uh, I said, okay, so he came in, took his coat, hat off and whatnot, and started the, the water test. Why did you let him in? That's a good question. I guess it's just my nature. <laughs> I don't like to be impolite to anybody. And no, Turns out the free he, test he was just a ploy to sell Beth a water purification system called Simple H2O. It claims to be the most popular brand in Canada, costing thousands of dollars. When he came to the door, what did he say about selling you anything? Nothing. This was for the purpose of doing a water test. The, the selling came up later. Beth didn't know it, but across Ontario, police and city officials issued these warnings about various companies offering free water tests, questionable sales practices, possible water testing scam, and media reports of salespeople preying on older adults. And at Marketplace, we hear from you about some distributors of simple H2O products. That's why we ring up head office and arrange an appointment at our cameraman's house. His mom, Barbara, is the client. Hello, you have reached our customer service line. Oh yes, good morning. Is this simple H2O? One of Simple H2O's distributors, Marshall EcoSmart Solutions, is sending over a sales rep. We turn our hidden cameras on and hide upstairs. Outside, we're on the lookout. Tom, he's here. Thanks, copy that. Thank you, copy that. He's approaching the front porch. He has a briefcase. Roger that. He brings along his testing kit, but before he even tests the water, he has a warning. A lot of people in Melton will refuse to drink their water. Yeah. No. For the simple reason is what Milton's they, particularly bad. Yeah, everywhere. And another um, big warning about chlorine. Now in Melton, there's more chlorine per household than there is in a YMCA swimming pool. <laughs> Okay. Oh my God. And he tests the water with a kit used to test chlorine in swimming pools. Chlorine levels in your water is considered unsafe to swim in. And they're giving it to us. And apparently chlorine is the least of our worries. Now ammonia and bleach, if they are mixed, it will cause a chemical called mustard gas. Yeah, like, isn't that explosive? I don't know. If, uh, it's a gas. Okay. If you breathe it in, it makes you bleed from the inside out. Oh. They use it in the water. Yeah. Right? And that's what ammonia and bleach, if mixed, will make. Okay? But they, it's, getting, it's so close to being mixed, it's not even funny. Okay? Scared it's, yet? Right? We check out Milton's water quality. Good afternoon, Halton Region. How can I help you? 
Yes, hello. I just had my water tested in, in Milton, and they said it had more chlorine than you'd, you'd find in a swimming pool, and they said there was even mustard gas in it or something. Should I be worried about this? Okay, you know what? I'll just let you speak to the manager, okay? Thank you. The region says these claims are unfounded, and the water is safe. But back in New Liskard, the test convinces Beth that maybe something's wrong with her water. What was the test that he did? He, uh, he had two glasses, about like so, clear glasses, and he put water in one from his filtered water. He had a container of filtered water. Okay. And he put my tap water in, in the other. And uh, then he put... Um, a uh, gizmo with two electrodes into each of the uh, glasses. Mm -hmm. And naturally, his filtered water came up clear, but oh, the grunge on, on the tap water. To see what Beth saw, we tracked down that testing gizmo. It's called the precipitator. On the right, tap water. There was about that much just brown sludge on the top of it, and you think, oh, am I drinking that? Can't blame her for being grossed out, but don't be fooled. We head to London, Ontario, to meet someone who says it's just a trick. Hey, Dan, how you doing? Good, Tom, yourself? Good, thanks. And guess what we got our hands on? A simple H2O testing kit. Look familiar? Dan no. Huggins is the city's water quality manager. He's investigated tests like these, even went so far as to get an in-home demo. The presentation I saw, I would describe the, uh, as dishonest. They were telling me things that were absolutely incorrect. In these sales pitches, I've seen uh, simple chemical uh, tricks being used uh, to make the water appear to be uh, undrinkable. We asked Dan to show us the trick, like the one Beth saw. But the precipitator was recalled. No electric gizmo in here. Right. Now a similar trick is done with chemical drops. The kit comes with instructions. Five drops of that into each of those test tubes. We follow them to a T. We lock off our camera and watch what happens. There's tap water on the right and simple H2O on the left. Their water is purified by reverse osmosis, which removes everything, including minerals. And that's the trick. A reverse osmosis system like this removes those minerals from the water. So now there's a slight chemical difference between the two waters. Ours with the minerals, theirs without. Dan says it's an interaction between their drops and the minerals in the water that is causing the cloudiness. They've used a little bit of chemical trickery to make it appear that there are these hidden contaminants in tap water, and that's simply not the case. These are essential nutrients in our diet, these minerals. And all this test proves is that our water contains these minerals. That's right, the test proves nothing about water quality but not exactly the sales message back in Milton when we see those drops, the precipitation test. So what I'm using is my water and your water, just to show the difference. See how it's clear? Not one part in it. See how this is cloudy? We're left with the impression there's bad stuff in the water. Because when you're drinking dirty water and you switch to clean water, how much better do you think you're going to feel? Oh, I'm sure you're going to feel better. 150 percent better. And the solution, of course, the simple H2O system for thousands of dollars. Could you see any other reason why you wouldn't want to invest in your health? When Barbara asks to think about it, the salesman asks her to think about that brown water. And that's all stuff in your water there. I know, that's horrible. We have some of the highest quality tap water in the world. And, and we need to, to make our customers understand that so that they won't be deceived by these tests. It's under here? Too late for Beth in New Liskard. Oh, the trick works on her. She buys the simple H2O system for $3,500. You know the test he did with the two metal prongs? He turned yeah, your water yeah. brown? That's a trick. That's a basic, that's bogus science. I was taken, but good. You had no idea? No, I had no idea. But Beth isn't alone. In Tilsonburg, Ontario, a small town outside London, we meet Maggie Carpuzos. Hello. Hey, you must be Maggie. Yes, I am. Tom Harrington from Marketplace. Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Maggie Congrats. let the water tester in too because she believed he was from London's water department. We were under the impression they were going to test the water. There's something wrong with it. They're from the city of London. Um, we had no idea they were trying to sell us something.
And the fellow at the door did say he was from the city of London. Yes, he did. But it's a rep selling the simple H2O system. And sure enough, out comes the precipitator. It's kind of a trick, that's what the water people say. Absolutely, and that's kind of what we thought as well. But at the time, we weren't thinking that way, so. So when you saw that, what did you think when you saw well, the water turn? I, I was really concerned. Concerned was enough contract, to put down a deposit. Deposit is 500. But later, Maggie changes her mind Almost and tries to get her $500 deposit back. She says she leaves several messages, but no refund. Well, I definitely don't think it's right. They enter our house under false pretenses. Maggie's rep was from PureSense, a simple H2O distributor based in London. We discover a warning from the Sarnia police about PureSense. Citizens should not open their doors to anyone asking for water samples unless those persons are employees of the city. So, to find out about its sales tactics, we go undercover. Morning. Morning, how are you? How about and get hired okay. as a sales rep. We actually have a seat. We attend a two-day training session. Our hidden camera is rolling. When we come back... Chlorine is a toxic, corrosive, poisonous chemical designed to kill living things. We're in London, Ontario, at a training session, learning the secret sales tactics behind a water purification system called Simple H2O. The number one step is you go in and you make a friend, right? People like you, they want you there, especially with elderly people. They don't really see too many people come around. They love having you there. They never want you to leave. And once you're in the door, show there's a problem with tap water. To do that, perform what they call a water quality evaluation. Sure enough. So I'm going to show you. This is called a precip test. And basically the water yep, treatment plant. Yep, the precipitation test. So I'm putting five drops of precip A, one, two, three, four, five, which is... And out comes the swimming pool kit. So where would you say that the levels of chlorine are in the London tap water? Low, medium, or high? High. Extremely high. Extremely high. So Once again, suggesting more chlorine than in a pool. If it's not safe enough to swim in it, what makes it safe for us to drink it? Hmm. We check that out with Dan Huggins, London's water quality manager. It, it's definitely uh, misrepresenting the truth to state that there's more chlorine in tap water than there is in swimming pool water. Yeah. But selling the dangers of chlorine is key to selling these systems. Chlorine is a toxic, corrosive, poisonous chemical designed to kill living things. Let me ask you guys a question. Are we living things? Absolutely. Yikes, should we be scared? To find out, we bring in one of the top water quality experts in the country. Steve Rudy advised the Walkerton Inquiry on water safety. Hey Steve, Tom Harrington from Marketplace. Nice to meet you. We ask him to dissect the trainer's message. One of the main problems with having the chlorine in the water is that chlorine breaks down into a lot of disinfection byproducts. One of the byproducts is trihalomethane. Trihalomethane, that's THM for short, and the trainer's message, be afraid. The side effects of THMs are birth defects, miscarriages, bladder cancer, intestinal cancer, and so forth. So is there a reason then for um, people to be concerned about THMs in their water? Uh, no, they should not. And, and uh, I mean, it, it's particularly ironic that the focus is on THMs because uh, they are truly harmless in drinking water at the levels that they're there. At drinking water doses, no cancer, no so, risk, zero. So, when she says so bottom line, just more fear-mongering. But the trainer throws out several quotes on the risk of drinking chlorinated water like this one. A recent study showed an increased risk of bladder and possibly colon cancer for people who drank chlorinated water for 35 years or more. Let me ask you guys a question. Do you plan on drinking chlorinated water more or less than 35 years? That claim is right in her training binder. Information lifted, logo and all, from Health Canada. It's a misrepresentation by cherry-picking information out of a huge body of knowledge. Uh, that study was done in Ontario and published in 1996. Uh, it's still regarded as, a, as an important study, but uh, it's not in any way conclusive 
that uh, chlorinated drinking water poses a bladder cancer risk. And the paper says, well, part of the reason we did this is because THMs cause cancer. Well, we know now that that's not true. In 1996, that was still a belief. So they're basically what they're taking is taking something not only out of context, but totally out of date? Uh, that's correct. And when we take a closer look at Health Canada's information, here's what the trainer leaves out. Current scientific data shows that the benefits of chlorinating our drinking water are much greater than any health risks from THMs and other byproducts. Back in training, she takes it one step further. Apparently, it's not only risky to drink chlorinated water, it's also bad if we absorb it through our skin. What happens in a 10-minute shower? When you put your children into a bathtub, how much chlorine do you think is left when you take them out? Absolutely nothing. Yeah, that's utter nonsense. She obviously doesn't understand the chemistry of any of this. But near Calgary, these tactics almost worked on David Barchard when a salesman came to his door. What he was trying to convince us of essentially was just how bad our water is. The distributor, Simple H2O Calgary, tests his water. And he said, do you guys have kids? We're like, no, not right now. He's like, well, how would you feel if you had children if they had, were taking baths in this water? This water is absorbing into their body and they're gonna be you know, growing, developing. Like This could develop into numerous different health issues and are including cancer. Like How does that make you feel? That kind of talk turns Barchard off and he says, no sale. It just made me think actually more that this was almost a poorer product because it has to be sold on a, on a system that's based in fear and based on emotional aspect. Back at the training session in London, this sales message takes the cake. So when you eat breakfast this morning with your child or your spouse or whatever it was, before they bit into whatever they were eating, would it be safe to stop them in their tracks and tell them, hey, don't eat that. I need to pour some Javix or bleach on top of it first to disinfect it, and now you can eat it. Could you think of anybody who wouldn't get sick sooner or later from consuming Javix or bleach on a daily basis? Well, you know what's really tragic about that nonsense is that it was the failure to chlorinate adequately in Walkerton that resulted in all those people getting sick and seven people dying. To represent this as being somehow what's making people sick, the fact that you're disinfecting, is just nonsense. You know, how would you describe what this business is trying to do in the end? It's making money off of misinformation, it's misleading people, it's scaring people, it's uh, um, the most charitable thing you can say is it's ignorant, but you know, if they fully understand what they're doing, then it's fraud. Pretty strong statement. So we get the trainer from London on the line. I don't have any comments on this. There's actually a PR that takes care of all this stuff. His name is Trevor Breezebois. Trevor Breezebois does more than PR. He's the president of Simple H2O. Hello, you've reached the voicemail of Trevor Breezebois. Uh, hi, Trevor. It's Tom Harrington calling from Marketplace. Would we really like to have We ask him for an interview. Story, so I'd love for you to get back to me as soon as you can. Breezebois turns us down. Too busy, he says. He does send an email and claims he's unaware of the tricks we've uncovered. We get a tip and get our hands on yet another kit. Confirmation the precipitation test does come from head office. See, here are the drops. And there's something else. An internal email from Breezebois to his distributors and staff, telling them, don't talk to the media. Just follow his script, saying, terminate the conversation politely and immediately. The email was sent the day after we requested an on-camera interview. Beth Moore is not hearing much either. Her simple H2O system breaks down three times. She says the distributor offers to replace it, but she just wants her $3,500 back. They refuse. I'm angry at the company. I'm angry that they're allowed to get away with this, and I'm angry at myself for being naive. She wants answers, and so do we. When we come back, we pay Trevor Brisebois a surprise visit. We know this is the kind of thing that you guys do, that this is a bit of a trick. In Woodbridge, Ontario, we're tracking down the president of Simple H2O to find out why sales reps are using scare tactics to sell his water purification system. Hey there, I'm Tom Harrington from Marketplace. Is Trevor Brisebois there? The woman inside won't even open up the door and says the boss isn't around. We bought some water because we know this is the kind of thing that you guys do, that this is a bit of a trick. 
Uh, we just want to let you know that we know about it. No luck here. So, just like the people who sell his products, we go to Brisebois' home and knock on his door. No answer. He may not want to talk to us, but we're talking to the Ontario government. We take what we've learned to the province's Ministry of Consumer Services. Colin McKenzie is with the Consumer Protection Branch. The video that you showed me is very interesting and it does give us some concerns. But in order for us to find out what Brisbois might have said or what some other person in another business, we need to have the facts so that one of our investigators can go out and actually do an interview and find out what the evidence is. Based on what you just saw, is there anything there that would lead you to want to do an investigation? Yes, there are. Can you there is a situation. Yeah, can you can explain yeah. why? The representative, in my view, false, misleading, deceptive representations were made. And that is an unfair practice, which is an offence under our Consumer Protection Act. If members of the public come forward and make complaints about this particular business and this company, yes, we can certainly start the process going. We need a starting point. The starting point is a complaint. Meantime, back in New Liskard, Beth Moore is still hoping for a refund and wishing that maybe she hadn't been so nice. Next time someone comes to the door and knocks on your door as a salesperson, <laughs> Not anymore? <laughs> no more. Once bitten, twice shy. Next week on Marketplace, rip off roofers. If we see him, the first thing we'll do is phone the police. I've seen the impact of his bad workmanship. We've got Mike Holmes on the case. This is in really rough shape. Can anyone stop them? Hey, Kyle, Erica Johnson from CBC Marketplace. You got the worst cell phone bill in the country? Hi, Canada. Can we call Winnipeg? This is South Ontario. I'm from Vancouver. Hi, hello. The search hello. for Canada's Hi. worst cell phone bill is on. Send us your story and your bill.